to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, <laughs> welcome, oh, man. <laughs> what was? There was a lot that was messed up there, <laughs> including the the one singer of the podcast not singing. I tried to come in, but I didn't know the deucers were going to do that. I, it I wanted was, them out. Well, of course, it, it was it's not a barber barber shop. A barber shop. It's, it's not a barber shop like. What is this? A well, sextet? I saw Mike sitting on the bench, and I figured I needed to get in the game. I'd, that you know, game? No, we were stacking. Yeah, and then, and then it went. Ah, uh, and then it was like just like a half tone yeah, above, I know, and then I know, I was, and I then I didn't know what to do. Well, welcome in. Welcome in. Uh, it was an idea. It was an idea because you know hey. my, my voice has been it's a little shaky this morning. You miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take, Michael Scott. And I, you know, we can only have one. Um, special squeaky welcome in and i thought that would fix it but uh sorry everyone welcome into the fantasy footballers podcast jason moore mike Wright, andy holloway trade talk on today's episode thursday night oh. preview nfl news hungry for more and uh if we can zoom in on jason's camera real quick we also have a new we addition. got it we got a new addition to the set <laughs> Um, Come on, weatherman. It's the other way. Back behind Jason, we do have a uh, an official Dennis Allen thermometer. It's uh, got 10 spots. Two of them already have W's in it. Oh, yeah, see, now, that's right. Now we left the camera. Now that's, go back Go back to his camera. That's Thank right. you very much. I can't put this one on, suckers. You lost so, to Philly. 10 W's for Dennis Allen and the Saints equals one shaved head. Not going to happen. Not worried. Oh, you're back to not worried. Yeah, I after was you really sent the, after you sent the car in. Every was that oh, was that reverse? Yeah, it was reverse uh, psychology. Ruin everybody listening to the for show. Dennis Allen. Um, yeah, I mean, if if they had pulled out the W against Philly, all they would need to do the rest of the season is go 500, and I uh, would have been a little scared. But now that they lost Philly, honestly, I, you know, maybe Philly gave them, uh, you know, gave other teams the uh the methodology to beat this offense because this offense did jack squat yeah and part of that rashid shaheed catch one of your five targets can you do that can you catch one of the five uh i won't be playing him in DraftKings this week so yes all right we uh we got so much to talk about including uh giving a congratulations to d role who is number one in the mega bowl right now I think I looked it up yesterday, and the Falcon himself is sitting at 18. That's still pretty good. I think it was 49 last time I checked. Oh, oh that's you, not oh, as good. You slipped, you slipped further. That's still I, pretty good, though. Top 50. What's, what's crazy is your record is, I think, 5-1 and one now, right? Yeah. And mine's 6-0. and oh. I just thought you should know that. <laughs> um, all right. What else do we got to talk about? Congrats, Dr. Rowling. 493 points. And if you're in the Megalobowl, you can check the standings, megalobowl.com all year long if you don't know what the heck i'm talking about the megalobowl is the um largest in-season tournament available to the foot clan supporters and you sign up in august and so you yeah, know there's about twenty thousand of you in that tournament right now and as a reminder the leaderboard is showing basically points but andy brings up the the record within your league of 12 that you're playing in the top half will make the playoffs like most 12 team leagues so you need to be in the top six as as far as record not points within your league then you'll go on to the playoffs, which are all points-based. I also wanted to answer one quick question for Foot Clan members before we get into Hungry for More. There are a lot of you over the last 10 years that have supported the show over on Patreon, and so you continue to support over on Patreon. We migrated our, our uh, membership system, and we brought it in-house, That's and then we built the Ultimate Dashboard this year. If you're supporting on Patreon and you're content over there, you're you're cool to stay over there. You'll get the same perks, and and we've been supporting that. But if you do want to upgrade your tier, I just want to say this out loud so it's not confusing, and I can see Papa Josh, who is the community manager over there, nodding. But if you want to upgrade your tier, you need to switch over to the new system, and that's as simple as just going to jointhefoot.com, signing up, and then after you sign up on there, you can go and cancel your subscription over on Patreon. Bada boom. You're in the ultimate dashboard. You're getting your lineup optimized, and you're getting all those sweet, sweet 
perks. Josh said, bless you. Bless you for saying that. Are you happy, Josh? Are you happy I told the people what to do? Thank you. The people <laughs> thank you as well. Okay. All right, let's jump in. Welcome to Hungry for More, presented by Uber Eats. All right, we are jumping into Hungry for More. And players, teams that we have seen some positive things from that we want, uh, we're hungry for more. We want to see more as the season progresses. I'm going to let Mike go first, in part because this is a trade show and we're talking about trade away, trade for candidates. And I received some very aggressive trade offers, including players from this team that I think are sell high attempts. Oh. And so you're hungry for more. Carolina Panthers. Yeah. Man, the... When the benching of a sentence you couldn't have said you know, one week ago. Exactly. When the benching of Bryce Young happened, of course, you know the, the questions are, "Hey, Deontay Johnson, what's it going to look like?" And it was uh, kind of the the answer from the show was like, "He's a really good player. I don't know if I can just put all my chips in and, and say, "Hey, everything that I've seen from the Carolina Panthers is going to be fixed," because they're going to Andy Dalton, and Andy Dalton comes in plays just absolutely out of his mind this the, the move from Bryce Young to Andy Dalton was it had it was the move it was the correct move like that's solidified they did the right thing for the rest of the team Maybe, and I still think even the right thing for Bryce Young but it spreads out like a spider web of Chuba Hubbard while remember last year the end of the season even with Bryce Young Chuba Hubbard was good for fantasy football it looks like after week one's weird usage, he's locked right back in to being the guy. 26 touches last week. I mean, that that's – wait, what, it really was 26? Man, yeah, 26 opportunities. Unbelievable for Chuba Hubbard. And then, and, you know, Deontay is now – how do we view him? Is he like – is he a top 30 guy? Is he a top 24 type of a player? All I mean, the way branching out to what, what do you think about Jonathan Brooks and his return of – of where he is in the recoveries. I, I believe he's about 10 months, so that's not an uncommon timeline for a player to get back on the field. Will he be eased in? Will he take over the job? There's so many fascinating fantasy bets to take with this team right now. I pointed it out in the offseason, but Chuba Hubbard ended last year with a string of games, which looks uh, eight deep, of finishing at wide receiver 29 or higher. Nope. The Running back. There you go. Yeah, there it is. Uh, majority of those were in the top 24. He had a really good run to end the year. And and just to point out, like last week, Chuba Hubbard ran for 6.4 a carry. This past week, it was 5.4. So it's been two good weeks where the production is there. Now, the problem with buying in on Chuba is the Jonathan Brooks story and when does that come to fruition. But like Chuba, if this team succeeds, they win ball games. This is my concern with Jonathan Brooks. Sure. Was just that. You're not going to bring Jonathan Brooks in to do everything as soon as he's available, if that's week seven or week eight, if Chuba's performing and the team's doing well. So, you know, the, the, that situation's interesting. I think that something that could happen as, as they ease Jonathan Brooks in, which they will at least, I think they will at least for a couple of weeks, but you don't take a running back in the second round. I mean, they were there. Chuba was there last year. It's a new regime and everything, but they were able to see what they had in Chuba. You don't spend a second-round pick on a running back to not think that this is a focal point of what the offense will be. And so the part of the ease in, I'm wondering, will he take more passing work? Because that's been fantastic here for, for Chuba. Five targets, two straight weeks. Week two, it wasn't, the efficiency wasn't there, but this last week, caught all five of them, got that sweet... 55 receiving yards to to pad on, which is like that's – if Chuba's just running the ball and then Brooks is splitting that work, that's a huge damper for his fantasy output. I, I think it'll be a very slow transition, one that is not going to be unpredictable. Like I, I think Chuba will be playable, startable until you know – like you, we should know the right week. We should go, okay, it looked like this last week, was, you know, which I'm guessing is like Jonathan Brooks' third week back. Where it's like, okay, they're they're starting to make that transition. Schedule wise, that lines up to be Washington. If that's because he's eligible, if he's back yeah, if he's five. eligible week five, 
Don't know if that's for sure when he will be back. I, I, I still think Jonathan Brooks is going to be a darn near league winner at the end of the year, but I, I do agree with Andy that it is he's not going to come back and be the dude at all, right? He didn't get training camp. He He's coming off the ACL. I think that it will be a very – like a month-long wait after he's back until he's worth it. I, I still want him, but – Bucky Irving is my hungry for more name. Running back for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Last week, 9 for 70 against the Denver's defense. Three targets, 14 yards on the ground. He is on the field with Rashad White very often on these little, uh, almost like tight end positioning end rounds. Went and watched all of his tape. He's averaging 6.2 yards per carry through three games. And his head coach said he has earned the opportunity for more snaps and uh I Bucky Irving is a very very good running back that I think is entering the flex consideration category with a running back in Rashad White that's been dealing with injury and underperformance between the tackles so you know if this team has a good matchup I think Bucky Irving can slide into your lineup but I'm hungry to see more of Bucky Irving it's kind of interesting because we just talked about the Panthers and, like, if Jonathan Brooks, as a rookie, which is what Bucky Irving is, comes in and, and Chuba is inefficient and failing, that opportunity comes much faster. And the fact that Rashad White is struggling, I think, means that Bucky Irving's opportunity could come faster. I, it, it's important for me at three weeks into the season to acknowledge how right Mike was Hey, about – this situation Thank about you. the Rashad White inefficiency. And well, I'm yeah, and, and Bucky, and even if there's some injury stuff going on with Rashad White, who was so excellent last ah, year, like with the groin, like the Bucky Irving is a thing narrative that Mike brought up, and like, hey, you really have a guy here that is talented, that is a threat to the work. I didn't believe that because of how good Rashad White had been last year through the air, and I I was wrong. Uh, so. And and speaking of the groin injury, because I I. I was curious with Bucky Irving being so good, so involved, and and knowing how bad Rashad White has been so far this year, is the groin injury limiting his snaps? And the answer is no, it is not. No. 70% of snaps week one, 71% week two, 74% last week. So the groin injury, maybe it's slowing him down a little, but it's not keeping him off the field. It's not like they aren't approaching this like he's an injured player. Well, and it's interesting that you say that because that also, like, the snap percentages being the same, but Bucky Irving's involvement going up lends to that thing where you go watch the film and they're both on the field together very often. And and those are actually really well designed plays where there's misdirection and the defense you, you gotta pick which running back that is gonna get the ball. So yeah, he's not at the point right now where I think he's in any sort of auto play. It, it's just matchup based. You gotta get those snap counts up above thirty five percent, but it's impressive so yeah, far. Thirty percent in three games is his snap uh percentage. Bucky Irvin already has as many runs of 30 yards in his career as Rashad White, who no. has who has 432 carries. Yeah, he's just not an explosive hey. in-between-the-tackles runner. All right, I am hungry. <laughs> Mike, you're going to love this one. I'm oh. hungry for more Dallas Goddard, oh. baby. My man, the guy who brought me the dub over you in improbable fashion, the guy who went nuclear last week <laughs> despite the fact that he was so slow on his giant play that his teammate <laughs> is yelling at him to unhook the trailer the unhook the trailer was a phrase i've never heard that it makes but so much sense but it was it was so good is you immediately know what he is saying if you haven't seen it one of his teammates was mic'd up and on that big play while he's running down the field his teammates like oh come on come on you got this and he's like go he's like man you're slow unhook the trailer unhook the trailer ah oh, you're so slow i'm still happy though yeah. thank you it's that, like the funniest mic'd up moment of all it was, time it was entertaining that, that week last week was 29 percent of the total yards gained by dallas goddard last season yeah, I, I believe it. So here's why I'm he's, hungry. He's the tight end one yeah, on he, the year right yes, now. Yes, he is. He's the only tight end, quote, <laughs> averaging over 10 <laughs> fantasy points per game. Um, however, you've got Devontae yeah, Smith dealing yep. with a, a, a what looked like a, a bad concussion. We don't know if he's going to be there. It seems like it's very questionable if A.J. Uh, Brown is back on the field. And so they need Dallas Goddard plus – the matchup is really, really good. They're playing Tampa Bay in week four. Last year, the Buccaneers allowed the second most fantasy points to tight ends. 
So if you need him, if he's going to be utilized and the matchup, you know, the personnel on the other side of the field matches, I, I'm I'm hungry for more Dallas Goddard, and he's also my league of record tight end right now while uh, my other guys are injured. So uh, I'm very hungry for Dallas Goddard. <laughs> All right, uh, that was Hungry for More presented by Uber Eats. Get game day deals all season long only on Uber Eats. Official on-demand food delivery partner of the NFL order now. We will take a quick break, and then we'll jump into some news, and we'll talk some trades. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Well, we mentioned it yesterday, but Austin Eckler is um, hes still dealing with treatment for the concussion he sustained on the Monday Night Football game. The majority of the team flew from Cincinnati to Arizona, but he flew back to Virginia to treat the concussion. So Austin Eckler would be it would be very unlikely, I think, if he was back oh, yeah, out there yeah, yeah. in Arizona on Sunday. That would be, you know, three straight weeks of double digit performances from Brian Robinson. And uh the, you know, he is a he's a start very much so in Arizona in mm -hmm. that game, which should be a very fantasy relevant football game. The Chiefs elevated Kareem Hunt to the active roster and waived Keontae Ingram. Eh, we are we are in nasty town with the Kansas City Chiefs of, like, exiting the game. The confidence that I think you rightly should have had in what Carson Steele was able to do on the on the field with his peripheral numbers. It was, hey, this was fab incredibly well spent. Yeah, he's just, he's gonna just be to give numbers to that. He yeah. had 17 carries plus two targets, average 4.2 a carry, had goal line opportunities that didn't come through which is like, oh, great, they're giving him goal line. Maybe you trade for him, and he'll get it in the future. It could be a, a you know, a fantasy star while Pacheco is gone. But then it's it's a little messier now, and because Keontae Ingram is a key, uh, bless his heart, bless his heart. <laughs> he's trying he's a, hard. He, uh, he will forever be able to tell his kids and his grandkids he played in the national. Yeah, football look, league. he he made it. Yeah, but we had him here in Arizona for a while, and he's he's not the answer now. I don't think Kareem Hunt is either. So while this it is definitely messier and probabilities have shifted, I'm still on Carson Steele's a good play this week because I don't think Kareem Hunt is an answer at all. Yeah, do you want to then, detail what we did? Yeah, we we'll get to that. And then in addition to that, it is expected right now from from the reporting around Kansas City. Certainly, this is not a guarantee. But that in week five, when uh, Clyde Edwards-Alaire is eligible to come off of IR, that he will rejoin the team. That's far messier. To There's us. a full barbershop quartet. Yeah, exactly. That is so you'll full... have Samaj P. Ryan, Clyde Edwards-Alaire, Kareem Hunt, and Carson Steele. So it is a messy, messy room. Uh, Andy and I had a trade yesterday, and this was after the, the, the Kareem Hunt news came out. This was with full knowledge of everything going on. I took a shot that it is still going to be Carson Steele and that he's going to get better as a young, explosive rookie. And I traded with Andy for Carson Steele, and I traded away Zach Charbonnet. So two backups who are currently, or at least this last week, got all the volume um, for teams that you know went out and won their games, and both are seemingly somewhat temporary. Now I would, if if I had to say which player I I would rather have just in a vacuum is probably Charbonnet. I was the Isaiah Pacheco manager, so I'm taking the hopeful shot that if he's out the whole season, I've got a season long answer. This or, week, or if also, he comes back, I've then it doesn't matter that he disappears. And Charbonnet, while he's the running back 13 on the year and had a great week, faces a Detroit defense that shut down James Conner and has shut down every running back this particular week. And from camp reports, you know Ken Walker. They're optimistic. They said he's working hard to get back. So if Walker doesn't play this week, which I wouldn't expect him to, it's still Detroit, and then the week after, it's like, does he come back? So it was kind of a, a two-way gamble. But if, I like Charbonnet as a longer-term upside play because I know he'll get all the work when Walker's out, and I don't know that about Steele yet for the rest of the season. But yeah, I mean, you're talking about a second-round draft pick in Charbonnet who's been involved for two years versus an undrafted free agent rookie. Who, <laughs> yeah, but what's funny about that has is – a pet alligator. Is, 
<laughs> I know when Kenneth Walker is back, Charbonnet goes to the bench. Like, I don't know when Clyde comes back. Does Carson Steele go to the bench for him? I don't There's know. There's a lot of unknown with those four, those yeah. four names in Kansas City. Yeah, That's just I, the facts. I will say that with Charbonnet, when you say he goes to the bench, he certainly goes to second string. That's what I mean. But he's not he, he's not irrelevant. I mean, you, you saw him get a touchdown on a wheel route in week one with, uh, Char with, with Walker. Was Act. Walker already hurt, though? No. You, you know what's crazy is if you read the articles coming out of Seattle last week going into the game, there were several, multiple articles basically saying, this is – Zach Charbonnet's career in the balance in this game. Facing Miami with, uh, with him underperforming so far as a draft pick with no Kenneth Walker. Can he go out there and do anything? He and had he a, did it. He was 18 for 91, 5.1 a carry, scored twice, and caught some passes. So it was nice to see from a hopeful standpoint. But, yeah, that was, that was our trade. Jalen Warren in question for week four with the knee injury for the Steelers. I would be shocked if he plays. He's starting to feel like a wasted draft pick right now. Jaguars head coach Doug Peterson said Tuesday it'll be close whether Evan Ingram suits up to take the field. Is he the missing link? Is he's he, one of them. Is he the reason the Jaguars stink? He's one. Uh, he's he's making it. How many games have they harder. lost like in a row going back to last year? I mean, because they, oh, they blew the playoffs. They, they they started out it was like seven and one or something. I mean, they were a number one seed candidate late into the season. And they lost they one, two, three, four, five of their last six games, only a win against Carolina, and three to start the year. So so they've lost eight of their last nine with their only win coming correct. against the Panthers. That is correct. Something broken, man. Something yeah. but, broken there. And the answer to what's broken was let's pay Trevor Lawrence more money than yeah. we've ever paid anybody. It was. They were in the situation like the Giants were with Daniel Jones. And they have Daniel Jones. So – Mike McDaniel Whose said, numbers are right in line. Yeah, Pro they're probably they're probably overall better now than Lawrence. Uh, Tyler Huntley might start on Monday against the Titans for the Dolphins. Please do. Honestly, anybody. I think this is the best. Anybody the best knew. Choice. Anybody knew starting at quarterback until it works for Ty. I mean, the trades I've seen being offered for Tyreek Hill or Tyreek Hill being offered for other players. They're like, do you do this? I'm like, I. So I, I mean, maybe I saw, I saw a trade floated around, and it was being debated online. And for me, when I saw it, I was not even. To me, it was not debatable. Okay. So I'll, I'll bring this up. And what would you think if you had Tyree Kill? Okay. Oh Tra yeah, this is the one you asked me about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trade him for Malik Neighbors. In a redraft. Yeah, re redraft. You just. Right now, it's we're going into I week think you four. Take Malik Neighbors. Dude, yeah. I would do yeah, that a yeah, hundred yeah. out of a hundred times. Yeah. It wasn't even close to me because I think you've got a month of worthlessness for Tyreek where you're going to start him. Well, and that's a, that's you saying a month based on apparently thinking two is going to play football again, which yeah, is mean, not a realist. I mean, it's not it even be two a months. guarantee. It could be never. And so, and, and the thing is, is Tyreek will have a big game or two with the backup quarterback. They will find a way to get him one broken play. Uh, so you're going to need to keep starting him. But m the majority of his games, the majority of Jalen Waddle's games with these incapable backups are going to hurt your fantasy output. And Malik Neighbors just looks like, I mean, he's going to get 10-plus targets every single I, game. I love him. I, I love him. But he is your my guy, so you love him more. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. <laughs> Let's talk trades. Well, well, well. This is uh, we got three weeks. We got three weeks of data. Three weeks of wins and losses. Three weeks of momentum going one way or another Hold on. way. Wins? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, you yeah. might not be familiar with that term, Mike. Wins not in the league of losses. records. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. We're talking yeah. about the table. We're talking about different I sides of the you. table. I got you. So there are a lot of questions about what to do in the trade market, including pl people like Ian in Florida who says, I'm 0-3. Should I trade and reset or stay the course? Sometimes people want a change of pace. And I get it. And I think if you, you know, for Ian's sake, he's the third most points scored and the most points against him. You got to hold there. Stay the course. So that that seems like you're in good shape. And like, you know, I mentioned it earlier in the week. I had a team that scored the most points in the league. I played the same players. 
the next week, it was the one of the worst teams in the league. Like that is You're talking about dynasty. <laughs> I'm talking about both. Oh yeah, dynasty. Both? I was one of the most and. And you were the records. worst. You were the worst last week. Thank Just you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> no. And both of my teams were. Uh, we do median in both of those leagues. So they're both four and teams. They both laid an egg. And I'm sitting here and I'm talking to myself and I'm saying, look, I, I just need to play these players again. Like, I don't need to go out and and re-roll the roster every single week. However, zero and three is a different story, and I understand the feeling that you need to do it. Last year on this show, we did a trade for trade away show just like today, we said trade for Sam Laporta, mm -hmm. who was the tight end two at the time, but through three weeks was not somebody anybody believed. I mean, it's like Dallas yeah. Goddard. Dallas Goddard's the tight end one. It would be like saying, go trade for Dallas Goddard because he's going to end the year at tight end one. Yeah, and we're not saying that. I wouldn't do that. We're not saying that. We're definitely not saying that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, we can't – like, go trade for Brock Bowers. That would be awesome. We all right. believe. However, he was drafted in drafts thinking he could be this. So the person that pulled the trigger on him probably isn't going to let go. Sam Laporta was either picked up off of waivers or like the last round pick. Um, that's well, why it was a good trade for. We also brought up trading away Damian Pierce early in the year when we learned that it wasn't going to work and Devin Singletary was going to take over at that point. This year, we each have a trade for and trade away candidate. I'm going to let you guys go first. Uh, I'll jump in first. These are always really tough when you're trying to just – lock in and identify a player because that's not necessarily how trades can get done. But these are some players that we advise go look at it. And I want to bring up Jake Ferguson, tight end for the Dallas Cowboys. We are all scrambling. And I mean, with, with the tight end position right now. And things are just, things for the former superstars are absolutely insane of, Mark Andrews running just a handful of routes, and the one target he got was late in the fourth quarter. So this wasn't as – like, what is happening with Mark Andrews? And then, and then Coach Harbaugh is like, yeah, this is going to happen sometimes. Travis Kelsey, what in the world is going on with, with, with him? It's, just, it's everybody. Jake Ferguson, meanwhile, we thought – after his injury in week one looked like, uh-oh, this he might be toast like for the entire year. He's already back. Already back to 11 targets, and yes, game script really helped him out of the Cowboys were, were trailing to the, the Baltimore Ravens. This was a full comeback effort, and Ferguson got a bunch of targets there at the end. But he was a red zone dominator last year. We love that for our tight ends. And it's – what is the identity of this Dallas Cowboys team? It's a team that they're either – like either they can't run or they're just abandoning the run. Both. <laughs> yeah, like – Maybe that definitely I mean, the first one. I mean, I, I brought up Rico Dattle is a good stash right now as things play out. But for the time being, this smelly, is, smelly stash. This this team is going to throw the ball a ton, and Brandon Cooks, Jalen Tolbert, they'll fit in here every once in a while. But Jake Ferguson is the number two option for this team, and because of the injury situation, the team that has him may have had. Maybe they have a different. Uh, a tight end that they picked up, and you can go do wheel and deal. I just, I think that Jake Ferguson rest of season is going to be one of the most reliable tight ends that we have available. Going into last week, uh, it seemed like all of my leagues I had one of the injured tight ends, and I just, I was so excited to grab Ferguson off of some waiver, and in all of our league, he was rostered because I, I agree with you. I think Ferguson, his his red zone utilization is as good as anyone in the league. I think he led tight ends last year in, in that. And so he didn't come down with as many touchdowns as he should have. But the fact that he can go out and be a player that gets 11 targets in a game at the tight end position and then has red zone yeah. work. And is proven. Ooh. Yeah. He's not buying into just a couple weeks. So. You should have looked at League of Shadows, Jay, because I scooped him up off oh, the waiver no. wire. Wait, oh, Shadows is, Shadows is the one place I got. Mark Andrews, don't worry, <laughs> didn't need him. <laughs> <laughs> problem solved. Problem solved. <laughs> uh, I want to throw a little asterisk into Mike's trade for candidate. Okay. And I do believe, and I might have to whisper it, so listen carefully. Okay. Oh, I do believe you should trade for Travis Kelsey right now. Oh, okay. Wow. I think Travis Kelsey is a trade for candidate. I don't think he's been in shape. And I think he's going to get into shape, and they need him badly. He did have five targets last week. Which why was, was it, why isn't high. he in shape? Is this a Taylor Swift problem? 
not not a swift, but just I an mean, off season. A little, a little bit. I mean, there's a lot of com- love, a lot of, <laughs> a, lot of no, a lot of commercials, a lot of commercials, a lot of commercials to film, a lot of jet setting, a podcast, uh, a famous like, girlfriend, and, and and he's living the best life, man. If you if the older you get, the more you need the off season. Okay, the more you need that time to get in. And I just think, look, he's he's amazing. His career's amazing, but I think it's I think you're seeing it come along in season. This is his get. He's going to work himself into shape and this team I think it's gonna come along for Travis mm. Kelsey in the bottom of the barrel. So I'm just Okay. I I'm just I just I'm whispering it. Honestly, if you go think about it if you went and tried to trade right now, who do you think you get cheaper? Travis Kelsey or Jake Ferguson? <laughs> I mean Ferguson you'll get cheaper. Ferguson I don't be know. cheaper, but I but, don't know. But like you start to I mean if you went to I don't know. If man. you went to the Dallas Goddard manager right now, I'm not as the number one tight end, and you offered him Travis Kelsey. They're not all saying yes by any stretch of right. the imagination. You're saying that my league of record team that has Dal- Dallas Goddard, I should go tr- try to trade for Travis Kelsey because I'm pretty sure that'll get nope, nope, it'll get shut down immediately. I I think Maybe. if you, it, I think it's more the inverse where um, you don't ha- you don't have the experience of the emotional event like you spent. What, what uh, like a third back in second, a third rounder on Travis Kelsey, and he's been destroying you. He has like, eleven total points on the year. I'm pretty sure Goddard had eleven on that one play. Yeah, and the experience of Goddard trying to trade him at ten for one seventy after ten and one seventy, I I don't know if everybody's gonna do that. Anyways, I didn't want to hijack. Well, I, I get your that. From, I, or your trade for. I don't hate it. All right, I'll hop in with uh, my trade for candidate. My trade for candidate is the wide receiver forty nine. You've been you've been setting this one up for a couple weeks. Yeah, and uh, honestly, I thought it would be right now. I didn't know that this was going to be the episode we were doing the trade for candidates, but this was the exact week that I thought you should trade for him because on film, this guy has been everything that you two fellers hoped and thought he would be. I was out on this player. I was the lowest on the three of us on George Pickens, wide receiver for the Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm out on this production. It's, it's, oh, this production This production has been terrible. Uh, week one wasn't really yeah, that was bad. Right, he had points. 10 and a half fantasy points and half PPR, six for 85. It was like, and he looked good. He had some plays called back. Week two was Patrick Sertan, and he had two plays in that where he was unbelievably dominant on Sertan, uh, a, a deep play and a touchdown, both called back due to holding that didn't really affect the play. So y- you had a really good game in real life ability and execution that in the box score and in fantasy production, eh, just it didn't work out. It was a very, very bad game. Then last week, um, you 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 had a game that we knew going in. Like I said, you know, don't trade for him yet. Because this Steelers-Chargers game is going to be who can throw the ball fewer times. Who is going to um, run the most and throw the least? And that's what happened. This was a 20-10 to 10 total points scored in the game. Dominant Steeler victory. Um, and I watched the film, and here's what I was so impressed with. The reason I never really believed in, Kenny, uh, in George Pickens coming into this season is because I wasn't sure he was a complete wide receiver. He's kind of been this deep field stretching jump ball specialist, you know, highlight real guy that's going to be very hot and cold. The diversity in his routes is exactly what you want. There are plays where he's just running uh, right across the line of scrimmage, just, you know, it's little crosser trying to get him open where if they hit him in stride, he can take it to the house. Still running the nine routes down the sideline where he's coming down with those balls running across the zone, sitting down in a spot. Like, they are using him like an alpha wide receiver. He's the clear number one target in this offense, and he has passed the eye test incredibly while scoring very few fantasy points and upsetting their fantasy managers. I think if if you are the George Pickens manager and you get offered something of any kind of value for him, uh, you'll you'll be open to that. You, you're done with this. You don't want to start him next week if you haven't been watching these games. The talent is there. The opportunity. But you're is saying there. don't do that. I'm saying, well, no. I'm saying trade for George Pickens. But I if am, you have him, you're yeah. saying don't do that. Yes, if you have him, hold on to him. Okay. Um, if you don't have him, go get him because I think he's going to be affordable, cheap, and really good going forward. Um, you know, his he plays uh, Indianapolis this week. I think it's a good get right situation for him. And 
while the quarterback play is not great, you know, in, in Justin Fields, he hasn't he's, been – He's doing what he's been asked. Yeah, yeah, he's been doing what he's been asked, and um, they did just lose a really important uh, defensive asset this week. So I, I think George Pickens has much brighter days ahead, and when I watch him play, I'm like, I want that player on my team. Well, uh, I will go with a player that is the wide receiver 64 through three weeks. I'm going to go with Brandon Ayuk of the San Francisco 49ers. It's impossible for his value to be lower than it is right now. You're all about these players who are going to work themselves into shape. <laughs> it, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think, you know, Brandon Ayuk just hasn't worked out yet. And yet this is a player that was offered 30 million a year. Like we know who Brandon Ayuk is. We know what he's done. We know what you know, the history is and what the expectation is, and he's still getting targeted. This is more of a um, maybe it took a couple weeks to work into shape, and then last week, 10 targets, 5 for 48 is not the end of the world, and you're talking about a situation where you're pre-buying yeah, on the cheap, like Amari Cooper. Like Amari Cooper's cost right now is <laughs> not what it was last week because he came down with a couple of touchdowns and had a big game. The target numbers are going to be there for Brandon Ayuk, uh, we are just seeing the lowest possible value for him uh, in this moment. So I, I, you know, I've not not been the biggest Brandon Ayuk fan my entire time on this show. But at this point in time, if you can go get a player that has top fifteen potential, and he's the wide receiver sixty four, that is why you trade for them. You have to have the fortitude to go and yeah. offer something of value. Maybe a player that has been overperforming. And go get Brandon Ayuk. So I, I don't. I don't mind it. I. I wonder if. I. I wonder if more of the Brandon Ayuk managers, will have the same thought process of like, well, he's been, you know, he didn't have the off season. He didn't have camp. I think that's been the mindset each week, but it, for some of them, I think it expires. Yeah, you sure. wear you wear down. You know, that, can a man can only take so much. Yeah. I mean, let, let's let's do the conversation uh, justice here. I'm gonna read you some wide receivers and you tell me whether you'd trade them for Brandon Ayuk. Mike. Yeah. Would you trade Chris Godwin away? Who is the wide receiver oh, three? Man. Wow, you started with fire. Yeah, we're supposed to work our way up to these things. You want me to go that no, direction? No, 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 no. You stick him right in them flames. <sighs> what are Chris Godwin? Twenty five targets on the season, twenty one receptions. Yeah, the 253 yards and three tutties. The the touchdowns, like Godwin will not score in every single game. But eight for 83, seven for 117, six for 53. Is that a yes or a no? I'm trying to work through it of like what do I actually think about Chris Godwin? Because I because Mike Evans will Mike Evans will be back. Like he's I mean he's not gone, but I'm just, like he was gone this past week production wise. He will be more involved. He's Baker loves that dude. I think. Oh gosh, it's a yes for me. I'll I hop think, in for I, you. You'd trade Godwin. away? I would away? trade Godwin away. I, okay, I, I don't know. Godwin had two touchdowns all of last year. He has three so far this season. It's not really his normal thing through his career. But I, they're using him. Different. No, I, I. Stephon Diggs. I would trade. Diggs I would, for a. So Diggs, Diggs is the wide receiver twelve. Yeah, I would trade him for a. U. There is a subconscious impact of seeing the player rank on these platforms. Sure. Wide receiver twelve. Stephon Diggs. Um, what about? DK Metcalf, you'd hold on to Metcalf. Yes, yeah, I would. Uh, what about Devontae Smith, wide receiver eleven? If I could get Ayuk for Devontae Smith, if I could get Ayuk, I would do it. I would rather have Devontae Smith. Devontae Adams, wide receiver nineteen. Uh, I think I'd hold Adams. Jamison Williams or Brandon Ayuk. Brandon Ayuk. Ayuk. Drake London or Brandon Ayuk. Brandon Ayuk. Ayuk. So those are some names you could throw out there. London scored in two straight games. You're going to get that deal done. Like, I think the Drake London for Brandon Ayuk deal will get done in most of your leagues. Yeah. Also, and, just quick point of reference for everybody. If you can extract more value, please do that. Like, right. Use, use leverage. Say, hey, Drake London, look at these numbers. They're apt. Even if you don't believe in them, doesn't matter. You, you got to sell the numbers and say, hey, give me Brandon Ayuk plus this. Uh, yeah, Jonathan Brooks and Brandon Ayuk for one of these guys. Something like that, yeah. All right, what about trade-away players? Players you're going to unload right now. Maybe it's, These are spicy. You know, uh, uh, a live show back in 2018, I brought up the names hurt you. So sometimes you don't 
Jason, you are I'm you are freaking like exploding out inside because your trade away candidate is the best one we've ever had. And I have him in one league, and I was like, this is so <laughs> smart. It's so smart, and you have to do it. If you've got him in the league, you've got to go. You can get so much for him. Patrick. Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes. He's not that good for fantasy, man. He's an F, an F in our consistency rating over the last Which 17 games. Which accounts for 17 weeks of performance. He's the quarterback 13 in three weeks. And you people hang on to names and keep playing names because of history and hope. He's the best quarterback it's, in the yes. NFL. He Mahomes. is. He's the he's he's the current active who, who, goat. Who used to be the best quarterback in the NFL? Tom Brady. Okay. Tom Brady was the GOAT. He played 23 seasons. How many times did he throw 30 touchdown passes? Well, he yeah, Tom Brady was never wasn't always great for fantasy. Sometimes uh, he okay, was. Okay, that's Some, literally yeah. my point. Yeah. And it <laughs> oh, yeah, wasn't yeah, okay. like it wasn't like all the years of 30 touchdowns came consecutively by the way. And it 30 was, is not was, the benchmark of 50, which he hit. No, it was a peppering. Uh, nine of 23 years. Okay. Nine times Tom Brady threw for 30 touchdown passes. Okay. He had double-digit interceptions 12 different seasons. He only had eight seasons of over 4,500 passing yards for the GOAT. Like, you're going to have the best quarterbacks win ball games how they need to be won. Right, in and, the NFL. In the NFL. And this Chiefs team doesn't win ball games the way that the former Chiefs team needed to win ball games. Now, this is why we love Jameis Winston. Right. <laughs> we don't need to win ball games. We need As he fantasy said, yeah, points. That man lost ball games the way we needed him to lose ball games. But but Tyree Kill leaving this team was a fundamental switch in the way that they executed the offense because Tyree Kill, we saw it when he got to Miami, is a unicorn. He's a one of one. He's a different player. The yards per attempt. The touchdown percentage, the fantasy points per game was without Tyree Kill, Mahomes, and we've got 35 games without Tyree Kill. It's five fantasy points fewer per game. So big names give you those big headlines. You're very happy when you go into the week and you go, oh my gosh, my quarterback. Have you seen him? It's Patrick Mahomes. But we now have a run of, of, of 17, 18, 19 games where this is a bottom of the quarterback starters right. perform. Now, and that, you're going to start them every week. That doesn't mean you're going to not get you know a special game here or there from Patrick Mahomes, and you're going to listen to this show, and then you're going to see him throw some 74-yard touchdown to Xavier Worthy one week, and you're like, oh, you idiot. You should have kept him. Yeah, you're going to have that happen. Patrick Mahomes has not finished inside the top eight at the quarterback position since week seven of last year, and he only did it twice last year so you're talking about even those outlier games are barely coming 291 passing yards 151 217 five total touchdowns in three weeks that is not the normal recipe for old Patrick Mahomes tell me what is the Kansas City Chiefs record three and oh they're fine they're not they don't need to change this it's like the oh his average depth of target keeps going down they're back-to-back -back champions they're they're they are doing NFL right he, but for fantasy, I mean, you could trade Patrick Mahomes for a Jaden Daniels plus a lot, probably. Well, you're not getting well, me. Well, after, after, after last week. You after, reached too high. After yeah, that, last was, week, that was strong. Okay, <laughs> you came strong. Joe Burrow plus a lot. If, you, if you've if you got um, – Maybe. I think, no, you could do that. I think you, you get could that do done. That. If you're looking at your team and you've got Higgins or you've got Jamar Chase um, or you've got Dak and you want to flip – um, you know, for your stack, you want to take Mahomes and go get Dak or go get Burrow or something like that to make your team have more correlation, and then you might be able to get an extra piece on because he's Patrick freaking Mahomes, but he's not that good for fantasy. His A dot right now would be tied for the lowest of any qualifying quarterback since 2006. So you've got almost a 20 year stretch where he is throwing the ball that close to the line of scrimmage, and look at the roster. You don't have it. You don't have those players. You have Rashi Rice, who is the Far and away alpha of this team. Yes, he is. But he's also the leader in yards after catch. So he's getting some cheap yards for Patrick Mahomes, but his average depth of target is shallow. And then Xavier Worthy is very, very, like right now he might as well be called Nicole Hardman. Like I don't want to say that, but that's the truth. Like Xavier Worthy's route tree and utilization is not any sort of Malik Neighbors, Marvin Harrison, Brian Thomas Jr., any of those players. No, it, it certainly so is I not. Think, I will I say that trade him. the utilization was a little bit better this last week as far as route type and stuff. It didn't work out. He, he wasn't targeted, but 
uh, just behind the he scenes had no to be aware of. Um, no, I, I think or, he or, had. No, I didn't know. No, Worthy was two for 17. Yeah. Ah. But All right. So two no targets. We- two weeks in a row, two for uh, 17. I'm going to throw out the next trade Ooh, away interesting. target. Mike this, is shaking his head. I disagree on this. One. Okay. You disagree. And that's that's the point. Like, it's hard to find trade away. You yeah. have to trade away someone who has value. <laughs> like, right. right? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Trade away, you know, uh, Van Jefferson. He's not good. Like, okay. <laughs> okay. For what? Lay so, it out. So, right now, running backs are king. They are dominating in fantasy football. They're they're beating up on the wide receiver position. I think as the season goes along, it'll it'll even out a little bit more. This Aaron Jones has been a revelation for the Minnesota Vikings. I was the highest on Aaron Jones coming into this season. I thought I, I watched his film last year. And he now didn't you lose. You abandoned him. He, no, now I'm capitalizing on him. Ooh. Um Aaron Jones hasn't lost a step. He's really, really, really good. Um, he was great last season. He got injured, uh, came back, was great at the end of last year, goes to the division, uh, you know, rivals and has been great. And the Minnesota Vikings team is three and zero, and they're surprising people. And they're, they're looking like a great offense. And Sam Darnold is great so far. He's averaging six yards per touch. Only JK Dobbins is better with running backs with 30 or more touches. He's never really been a bell cow. The reason I'm willing to trade Aaron Jones is twofold. One, I think you can get a lot for him. This is a top 10 running back who has spent his career being a top running back who's looking great. Like, people will want Aaron Jones. They will pay up for Aaron Jones. This is a matter of flags. This is a matter of yellow flags. He's a he's a 30-year-old, run, almost 30-year-old running back. That's a flag, not in his case. The Sam Darnold thing, look, they've been great. The coaching staff deserves all the credit in the world. It's still hard for me to, if I had to take my house and say, Sam Darnold finishes this year as a great quarterback or finishes this year as a um, you know average to below average quarterback if I had to put my house on I would still go the other way based on just the amount of historical data versus the 3 weeks we've seen in Minnesota. I think teams will start to figure some things out. When you've got a back who is in a committee who is super efficient right now, who is older, whose team has ways it could go wrong. I I just don't think that what you're going to see the entirety of the season is utter domination from the Minnesota Vikings and from Aaron Jones. Um, I am not saying unload him. He's a ticking time bomb. I just think there are so many ways that I could see it go wrong, whether it's Darnold, whether it's injury with his age, uh, whether it's the the timeshare um, you know that, that we saw in week two where he wasn't that good because he was splitting reps. And because there are a handful of ways it could go wrong, I would rather capitalize on what has gone right right now and try to find more value, probably at the wide receiver position, some of these other guys that we've been talking about that have been maybe underperforming, uh, plus something. That That's that's the, that's the method I want to take here is trying to find a guy who you just think is like, I don't think it's going to last as good as it's been for the first three weeks for the next 14. All right, Mike, who's your trade-away candidate? So this one, he does not have production value, but I think he still has name value, and is DJ Moore. And I am very nervous about what's going on here with the Chicago Bears. It's a rookie quarterback. This one is sketchy because it's a rookie quarterback who the schedule is great right now. We, we kind of rattled that off the other day for the Bears. The, the upcoming schedule is so good. And Caleb should get better over the second half of the year as he becomes more of a vet and less of a rookie. But it is not happening for DJ Moore. Five for 36, six for 53. And the reason why I think he is a trade, because you look at the box right now, you go eight for 78. That's not too bad. We got 11 points. 44 of those yards were an absolute garbage Hail Mary at the end of a half. That was just... And that's just a, a that was a gift from the fantasy gods. If you played DJ Moore, that saved your day. The targets have still been there, but Roma Dunze somehow he survived his injury. He's back. Like maybe he's breaking out. If once Keenan Allen comes back, I think that this is just it, it's even messier. Keenan Allen was super involved in that week. Maybe make the argument Keenan's not going to be able to come back from the heel injury, but if he does. Getting out of DJ Moore right now, I think that's the it's the way to go. Of I don't think that the production is going to get to the point where 
Like we're back to old DJ Moore, where he didn't have where he wasn't just the the one guy. It's for with it with a quarterback who's okay. It's back to DJ Moore is such a good wide receiver and he deserves deserves better than this. He, he's a really tough one because I'll, I'll just spoiler alert here. Don't know why I said it like that. All right. Um, he's my start of the week this week. So it straight him after this week. Well, and and, and right it now should work. DJ Moore is tied for number four in the NFL in target. Which, by the way, can you name the top top the top target leaders right now? Give me number one. Um, who's getting? It's number one by four targets. Number one by four targets. Malik Neighbors. Malik Neighbors. Oh yes, of course. Number two. Amon Ross St. Brown. Yeah. That's crazy because he had the down week. Number three is a tie between Rashi Rice and Amari Cooper. Okay. And then number four, uh, a tie between Devontae Smith, Nico Collins, and DJ Moore. So, yeah, um, the DJ Moore one, look, you make a good point for the future of DJ Moore beyond this week. Like, I, I don't expect Keenan Allen back. I think a lot of people are bending towards Roma Dunze this week, but DJ Moore's targets are there, so I'm gonna he's the start of the week for me this week. But the long term murkiness, Cole Komet's emergence, which came up on yesterday's waiver show, Komet, Allen, Adunze, and DJ Moore for a rookie quarterback who has not looked like Jaden Daniels. What do you guys think the chances are that Caleb Williams gets hot and figures it out this year? This year. Not uh, not in the future. This season, by the end of the year, you're saying he's like a weekly starter. 50-50. I, think, I would say lower than that it, it, because it's not just Caleb. It's the, that offensive line is how do you fix that in the middle of the season? I don't you think – fire you, Shane Waldron. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't think you can fix it right now. All right. Um, DJ Moore, the trade-away candidate there. Jason went Aaron Jones. I went with – Patrick Mahomes will take and, a break. And, and we'll if you trade these players, th these are not dump players. Right. These yes. are players that we think could have perceived. Well, Aaron Jones has great value, but Mahomes is a name. DJ Moore is a name. Don't dump these players. Upgrade your team. Utilize, That's the point of this. Utilize yep. the name or the production through these three weeks to get a great deal. All right, let's take a quick break. All right, we get a Thursday night football game this week, and uh, it's kind of interesting. Thursday night breakdown. The Dallas Cowboys, one and two, taking on the New York Giants, who are also one and two on Thursday night football in New York. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Dallas minus five and a half. The over-under is 45. Who doesn't want to watch? CeeDee Lamb and Malik Neighbors playing yeah, Thursday night fun. football. Yeah, this is fun. It's in division. Um, you've got a team coming off of a good performance in the Giants, who is the underdog going against a reeling Cowboys. The Giants are at home as well, which makes this more interesting. That being said, this rivalry has not really been much of a rivalry in decent in, in recent memory. Um I last year Dallas won forty to nothing and forty nine to seventeen. They have had the Cowboys, uh, the the Cowboys have had the Giants number, like brutally so. Yeah, and Dak is twelve and two against them in his career. Now Dallas has played terrible football. Yeah, like uh, bad defense. Poo 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 football. Uh, poo -poo, for two poo poo caca poo poo caca football. <laughs> uh, for two straight weeks, like I would say, to the point where Jason doesn't like any of their balls. <laughs> no, and, they, are, they are not crisp. And yet they get a five and a half point. Uh, you know, they got five and a half points here on the road, on the yeah. road. Okay. And so, you know, does their defense show up? Do we get a, you know, 45 points is a pretty good over under here. Implied point total of 25 for Dallas, 20 for the Giants. It puts Devin Singletary in play against one of the worst run defenses in the, I don't know, it last is, 20 years. It's really, really hard to imagine not putting Devin Singletary in your lineup. The, the process you know, it, it, I, I think the Cowboys will fix some things over the course of the season and not just be historically bad at stopping the run. But right now, after three weeks, they can't stop the run. And Devin Singletary, in his own right, has been pretty good. He's been a top 20 running back the last two weeks. He was top 10 last week um, against Cleveland. Looked good. And so, yeah, Devin Singletary, is I would say, is going to be an, 
90% of the leagues that have Devin Singletary should be starting him. As a reminder, since he is a flex type of player, make sure you put him in the running back slot, not in the flex slot. Which the lineup optimizer inside the Ultimate Dashboard will recommend as well. If you ever want them all rearranged, you can plug it in there. So Singletary this week over Pollard. Yeah, I would do that versus uh, you know Pollard against Miami. I'd probably play him over Dobbins against Kansas City. Would you play Dobbins? I would play Singletary over Dobbins. Dobbins. <laughs> the B was a little tough on that one. Yeah, it kind of sounded like so, a Dobbins. But I mean, uh, Dom you know, from a Dax in Dominus. I don't know. Just, okay. <laughs> what are we doing? Are for we lunch still? Today? We're still. We're still talking about that. I'm just, no, no, no. I was just. He said we were having a side conversation. Jk little, Dominos. We were, <laughs> yeah. Is that what you just said? Yeah, basically. I'm sending out. CD Lamb, Malik Neighbors are locks. The other wide receivers on both sides of the ball are complete. Just complete dart throws. I mean, just, you know, Brandon Cook it. scored a touchdown in week one, then two points, two points for two straight weeks. Ferguson, we talked about him. Of course, you're playing him. So it's like Dax, CD, and Ferguson on one side, Singletary and Neighbors on the other side. It's the easiest game imaginable because it's not just that those are the only players to play, but it's that you're going to play those players over whoever else you have. So it's like this is, I mean, there's really no questions in this game. And we need to remember to drop it like it's hot today, don't we? Yes, drop it like it's hot. So I explain that. Make make sure you look. Your waivers went through. Um, there's going to be in all your main leagues, you know, twenty waivers that go through. Well, that means there's fifteen to twenty drops that went through. T take a look at who is frustrated with someone, who is dropping someone foolishly, not being aware of. Uh, their situation and and see if there's like if you saw Zach Ertz hit the waiver wire like he oh, did you're just, in our league of record you're sprinting nah I've got Dallas got it bro I yeah, got the you're number one you're tight good. in you got tight end one all right that is going to do it for today's episode of the podcast check out jointhefoot.com for our community of listeners get access to the Discord channel and an extra episode every week tons of tools the stream finder the ultimate dashboard and a whole lot more and you support an independent podcast here the fantasy footballers. And uh, shout out to the Deucers today, Al Borland, back there, all black, hidden away, tucked beneath the hat. You guys did almost indistinguishable as a human being. Yeah, it's 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 <laughs> not it's nice for film. Um, but I, I want to commend you guys. You did a good job after the terrible introduction to the show. Just staying quiet back there. Just yeah, yeah. The barbershop quartet thing, you, you know, was a flop. And uh, here we are. Don't respond. So now shout out to Papa Josh. Good job. The Falcon. Actually made it in. <laughs> and uh, there you go. We're going to close we it down. We've got the starts of the week and more matchups tomorrow. And then we'll get into the wheel of shame territory on Friday. And um, it's going to be it's going to be a good time. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.